If you're friends with the White House, you get a bailout. It's that simple. And now we're learning that if you're friends with the White House, you won't get an investigation. Senate negotiators, just a short time ago, killing an amendment to the financial reform bill that would have launched a probe of shore bank. Now, even liberals like Barney Frank had agreed to a shore bank, a shore bank investigation. A bit of background here. Shore bank, for those who can't remember, is an embattled community lender with friends in very high places like the Obamas and the Clintons. Now, in May of this year, Shore Bank was about to go belly up. That's when our own Charlie Gasparino reported that several Wall Street banks were pressured by the White House to lend Shore Bank $150 million, which actually made it eligible for $75 million of TARP funds. That's your money. Republicans began calling for a pro, but looks like they're not going to get it, at least not in this new financial bill. Joel Pollack is running for Congress in Illinois. He has a long history of chasing down leads on Shore Bank. First of all, congratulations on your investigations, Joel. They are really path-breaking, but you must be discouraged that now it's out of the financial reg bill. Well, this shows more than anything why we need real change in November 2010. We need to bring in a Congress that's going to give the oversight panels real tools and real teeth to go after this bailout and to go after all the corruption going on on Capitol Hill these days. Now, this let's, was let's, talk, the let's, let's talk specifically, if we can, about the connections that Shore Banks has, because it really is one of, the, one of the best connected banks. And if you've got the connections, you can put pressure on all kinds of political people. In the top left, you see President Obama there, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Valerie Jarrett, who, of course, we've seen before in the, from the Obama administration, Van Jones. And then we see Representative Jan Schenkowski, uh, Representative Dick Durbin. Tell us about Van Jones. What is his connection to this? Well, he is featured by Shorebank on their website as one of their customers promoting the bank. He essentially is a pitch man for Shorebank. And one of the things Shorebank got into trouble over was their investments in environmental banking, which did not yield terribly high returns. And, of course, Van Jones being the former green jobs czar, there was a nexus of interest there. Shorebank's also gotten involved in what I call the weatherization underground, this scam where certain companies get money from the government to weatherize your windows and your homes and so on. And then only later do we find out that the vice president of the key weatherization company is also married to the weatherization czar in the White House and that Shorebank is handling the stimulus money. And it's all a big insider circle of self-enrichment. That's all what's going on right now. That's what, yeah, it's all connected. And that's why we need real investigations. Now, if there was nothing to hide, the Democrats in the Senate could have let this shore bank investigation go through. Even Barney Frank said, hey, we'll still allow banks that are in trouble to get the money we're going to give them while the investigations are going on. They did not let this go through. They blocked it, even though there was no chance that shore bank, if it was going to get a bailout, would have been denied by this amendment. And that shows they're trying to hide something. There's a cover-up here. And now the hands of the voters are the only hands that are going to be pointing those fingers. We have to get people out to the polls in November and say, hey, we want accountability. We want to empower the oversight well, committee. Hold on to go a second. Here's, here's Barney others. Frank. Barney Frank has a little issue of his own with a bank called One United. You may know about that bank. Very similar sure. kind of thing. One United uh, was a terribly mismanaged bank. It, it, it claimed to be you know, helping poor people with, with a lot of subprime loans and stuff. And maybe it did, but it was. Uh, it had as its company vehicle a Porsche. It was, its books were in terrible disarray. It should not have received TARP funds because it didn't qualify as a well-managed bank, but it got them partly because one of its branches is in Barney's district because Maxine Waters' husband was on the board of directors. This political connection with those who got our bailout money is what is driving people to vote the folks in office out of office, right? Right, right. and with Shore Bank, it's even worse because... My opponent, Jan Schakowsky, who was the lead congressional lobbyist, if you will, for the bailout for Shore Bank, was trying to bail out a bank that's not even headquartered in her district, while banks that were failing and struggling in the 9th Congressional District in Illinois went under, and she didn't lift a finger. Ultimately, one of your earlier uh, guests said this, it's got to be about productivity, it's got to be about jobs. You can't just keep throwing good money after bad. The only answer is job creation, reviving the economies of our inner cities, 
and getting people capital to start new businesses, to grow small businesses, and to hire more people. Right now, everything we're doing, both on the local, state, and national level, is well, the discouraging bottom line, business growth. The bottom and line, hiring. Joel, is a market that is manipulated by politicians is not a free market. We are for a free market, an open market, one that politicians go in and start manipulating for their own political favor at our expense is not only not a free market, but it is, it is on the verge of a corporativist, fascist system where the government controls the private sector and only the folks with connections get the bailouts. Final word, quickly. That's right. Well, we have to move not just to a free market, but to an opportunity market and focus on job creation, doing the things that put real wealth in the hands of real people by giving people a chance to achieve their own dreams. Shorebank has a nice idea. You provide capital to communities that need it. But Shorebank went wrong. Even the New York Times said Shorebank made bad management mm -hmm. mistakes. We can't continue to put the taxpayer on the hook, and not another dime of taxpayer money should go to Shorebank until there's been a full forensic audit. And we've got to change what happens in Washington, D.C., starting this November. Joel Pollack, good to see you, Joel. Thank you very much.